Hi guys, so I have literally said I'm going to do YouTube for so long now, but I'm so, so bad at doing all this video and stuff. And it's, it's literally like writing a book. It's like, how do you start off writing a book? How do you start off a poem? So that I'm just jumping right in. I'm going to start it and just uh, roll with it and just hope that you guys like it and that it gets views and that it helps people. So one of the main questions that came up when I said I was going to do YouTube was um, mainly people messaging me saying, you know, how do I know if my hair loss is a certain type of alopecia? What do I do? I've got hair loss. Um, so I'm going to run through some guidance really to help some of you who are experiencing hair loss, who don't know what's going on, who doesn't know what steps to take um, and give you some guidelines with that. So hopefully this can help. Um, so as most of you know, I have alopecia universalis, um, which is basically the worst kind of alopecia you can get. Obviously, this is a wig. Obviously, these aren't my eyebrows. I have no eyelashes. Um, I actually am currently on steroids, which will be another YouTube video at a different time. I'm not going to go into that now. Um, so I have got some hair coming back at the moment, but whether that stays or not is not a certainty. So time will tell with that. Um, but with my own personal journey, when I lost my hair, um, I went through it all. Um, I actually got scammed of £2,000 which is again another YouTube video that I'll be doing um, because I want to help others avoid getting into scams. Um, I basically was run, running around like a headless chicken. Like when you are losing your hair, the severe panic that you go through when you're like, oh my God, my hair is literally coming out. Um, it, it, I can't actually explain it unless you're going through it. The, the impact it has on your mental health, it has on your um, anxiety, it is a stress that is very, very intense, it was very, very difficult, it was by far the hardest stage of my hair loss for me, even though I've been left completely bald, the hardest stage was definitely the fall and that's mainly because you're panicking trying to find um, a solution, you're panicking trying to find a reason and you're also panicking trying to hold on to your hair um, because obviously today, every day, sorry, it's just getting progressively worse. Um, so hopefully these little guidances that I'm going to throw out there for you will help avoid um, quite a lot of time consuming and quite a lot of money because it also costs a lot of money to find out what is going on when it comes to hair loss. Unfortunately, the doctors aren't that great. Um, I would say your first stop is the doctors. Even though they're not that great, try and get an appointment. Try and get them to see you. I know it's difficult with COVID at the minute, but try and get them to see you in person. Um, they won't be able to help you in regards to a treatment they're very, very, very limited with hair loss unless it comes back as a thyroid problem or um, something else that's that's health affecting your hair loss. They kind of rule you off. So in my case, when I went to the doctors, they checked my bloods. So I had my bloods done. Um, they checked my thyroid, my iron levels, all my vitamin levels, um what's the other one, lupus, they check me for lupus, glandular fever, so they check you for everything basically, um, I, I, my bloods personally came back clear, so I was back to square one, apart from my iron levels were slightly low, um, in fact the doctors told me they were too high, but when I took my blood results to a trichologist after this, he told me they were actually very low, so this is again where the difficulty is with pinpointing what you're supposed to be doing with hair loss because the doctors will tell you one thing and then the trichologist will tell you another. So it's trying to find out obviously who's going to help you the most when it comes to hair loss. Um, so anyway, following 
after seeing the doctors, they unfortunately couldn't help me. So then I paid privately to go and see a trichologist. Now, a trichologist and a dermatologist, what the difference really is, I do not know because they tell you, oh, go and see a trichologist. And then after that, you get referred to a dermatologist. Basically, it's £200 worth of appointments each time for you to just speak to someone about what's going on and to be told, we don't know what's happening and you can try this treatment or you can try that treatment or even time will tell. We'll just, we'll just have to see with time. So with me, when I went to see a trichologist following my doctor's appointment, it was pretty, when I look back now, pretty pointless um I've had some lovely people help me I'm not knocking them at all um but I didn't get offered any treatment um I just got told to go on supplements my hair was continuing to fall um I felt like I was on a rush against time but now looking back I realized that if you are going to lose all your hair unfortunately you are going to lose all your hair your body is completely in control and that is something that is out of your hands. It's out of your power. Um, and a lot of the time, alopecia is caused and triggered by stress. Now, this is something that I was completely in denial about. I was like, no, I'm such a stress head. I've gone through so many stressful times in my life. There's no way at 28, I'm 29 now, but it's 28 when it happens. No way at 28 years old. I can possibly just lose all my hair and it'll be stress. There's just no way. Anyway, um, it's starting to look more and more like it is stress, um, which is crazy, which has massively, massively um, changed the way that I handle stress. It's massively changed the way that I try and deal with my anxiety um, and, and handle situations. It's also affected the way that I treat my body. So I, I, I'm very healthy now. Um, and there's a lot of different things that I've changed, which is for another channel for another time, um, which I will go into detail on when I'm asked and when I need to share it. Um, so yeah, after I saw the trichologist, um, I was still experiencing my hair loss. Um, I actually went private with this appointment, which is more expensive, but when your hair's fallen out, you are just rushing to see someone. You just want to be treated. You just want some answers of something. Um, one thing I will say to speed things up is um, to check your shampoo and conditioner. There's been a few rumours about products like Tresemme that say that they are really bad for your hair. They can give you an itchy scalp. They can cause hair loss. I think it's something to do with the sulfane. I can't say it. I'm really, really bad with stuff like that. But anyway, um, always use a salon professional shampoo and conditioner. I believe Nioxin is very, very good. Unfortunately, I've lost all my hair by the time um, I knew about Nioxin. But their products are fantastic if you are suffering hair loss. Um, quite a lot of people do suffer hair loss when they've had a baby. I get messages all the time from people, I've just had a baby, I'm having, losing all my hair. It is natural, your body's supplement levels go all over the show when you've had a baby. So hair loss is definitely very common and it doesn't go to the extremes extent. So try not to worry about that. Um, so yeah, um, sorry, I just got a message through then, it just put me off. Um, so different kinds of alopecias. So there is alopecia universalis, which is obviously what I've got, which is where you lose your hair on your head and your body. Alopecia totalis, um, which is where you lose it on your hair and your head and body as well, but you, you kind of get some back. I think that's right anyway. Um, there is alopecia areata, which is patches. Um, so patches all over your head that can come as like 50p coin and then usually they grow back so quite a lot of alopecia areata people um lose patches and then get the hair back and then lose it and then get the hair back which is still very very distressing um alopecia universal and then traction alopecia sorry i just lost my shape for then uh traction alopecia also is from hair extensions so heavy hair extensions used if you're wearing your hair in a pony too much it's basically pulling of the roots. You need to be really, really careful. A lot of people worry me uh, when they do experience hair loss and they're like, oh, I'm just going to get extensions. And I'm like, oh my God, 
if your hair is vulnerable and it's coming out, get a wig because at the end of the day, your hair is already distressed and you are already struggling to keep your hair on your head. Um, wigs are fantastic. This is a wig, obviously. No one would ever know. They are brilliant. I've got some recommendations, but I will do them as well on a second separate um, video for you guys. Um, so yeah, basically they are the guidelines that I would say to do when you are having hair loss. So check your shampoo and conditioner, um, go and see your doctors, get your bloods done, check all your blood levels, try and see a trichologist. Um, I would personally just skip and straight away see a dermatologist. And this is mainly because my alopecia happened so fast. It was literally five, six weeks and I lost everything. Um, I wish I knew as much as I knew now because I wouldn't have gone through all the stages. I wouldn't have been scammed um, that I went through to obviously try and get answers. Um, I would advise anyone that's losing quite a lot of hair quite quickly to order a wig. Um, this is mainly because once you get a wig, a good wig, you will realise how much you don't need to stress as much because wigs are actually amazing. I'd say the hardest part of my hair loss was my eyebrows, my eyelashes. Um, and that was because obviously it's on my face and you can't really cover them. Um, but I have launched my cosmetics, which are the eyebrows that I'm wearing now, which I'll tell you more about in a different video. Um, and they are fantastic. But eyelashes... They killed me. I mean, you can actually see my little eyelashes growing through here. It's a nightmare. I, I love them, not complaining. Um, they're from the steroids that I'm on right now. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of push my eyelashes off, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway, not, I'm not moaning, I'm not moaning. Um, but yeah, the treatments that you can ask for, you can ask for, if you've got Ariata, for example, usually they will give you steroid injections. Um, they will offer you with the oral steroid. Now, I actually took took me to see three dermatologists for one of them to go, oh, okay, we'll try on steroids, which is presosinol. I can't bloody say it. But anyway, <laughs> I'll do another video on the steroids anyway that I'm on um, to show you information about them because so many people are asking about the steroids. It's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, there's a steroid. There's, there's a treatment called, I think it's, D something I need to get the information up but basically there's different treatments that you can get offered one thing that I regret not knowing is when I went to see dermatologists and I paid 200 pounds each appointment which is just ridiculous but that's that's what it is um I basically didn't ask for a treatment they, they they basically tried to put me off they were like oh you'll hate us if we put you on steroids you'll hate the side effects you'll hate this you'll hate that um, and a lot of them were very negative of, you know, you, you probably won't get hair back. And that to me is not how it should have been handled. Um, I left some of the appointments in absolute floods of tears. If you've got my Instagram, you'll have seen that. Um, so yeah, just keep on fighting it basically. Um, but trying to accept yourself for whether you've got patches or completely bald is definitely the key. Having a wig is definitely definitely crucial even if you've got patches I would suggest a wig um it just relieves all that pressure off having your own hair on show um and they're fantastic I mean when I first put one on I was like oh my god this is so weird I've got a wig on like everyone can see it everyone knows everyone knows I mean now everyone does know because I've obviously shared it public but at the time no one would have had a clue and I think now even if I didn't share it public I don't think anyone would have had a clue so um wigs are fantastic and I definitely definitely recommend them um, but yeah, as far as hair loss is concerned, um, I also had people message me saying, could it be your implants? I obviously, these aren't real, um, <laughs> um, which I then got an MRI scan. I got them all checked. Um, my implants are fine. I know I'm fully aware it can still be BII, which is called breast implant illness. However, I haven't had any other side effects. I've just had the hair loss. And as far as I'm aware, no one suffering from breast implant illness has ever lost all the hair completely so quickly. Um, so I'm really, really trying to keep positive and confident that I don't have to lose my bosoms because I love my tits. Um, I mean, losing your hair and your boobs in one year is kind of 
sabotage like savage like yeah it's not something that I want to have to go through so I'm ruling that off for now as um a very unlikely resort and so are the doctors I've also seen a rheumatologist he was a waste of time don't bother don't bother going to see a rheumatologist I would recommend if you're wanting further bloods to go to Thriver oh Trivia Thriver Thriver yeah it's Thriver isn't it um, because they, but you can basically test for specific things with them. Yes, you have to pay for it, but it's quick and easy. I mean, you have to push your blood into it, which is not very nice. But listen, when you're losing your hair, you're prepared to do anything. Um, and most of the viewers watching this will have had hair loss and will agree with that. So yeah, they also do home blood tests. Um, I'm now next testing to see if I've got any allergies um which as i mentioned i have switched from dairy i now have oat milk i avoid cheese which is so rubbish because i'm such a pizza lover um i avoid wheat so i don't have bread anymore which again kicks pizza out of the agenda but it's fine um so yeah it's, it's just a case of looking at your diet requirements Obviously, if you've changed anything in your diet, if you've changed anything in your skincare routine, anything like that, then make sure you also note that down as a possibility because obviously your body is so sensitive. Anything can change and then that can bring on your body to attack itself. Um, alopecia is basically your immune system attacking itself. So my immune system has gone into absolute crazy overdrive and started attacking all my hair follicles, which has made them all fall out. Um, so yeah, that's what's happened with me and most people with alopecia too. So um, if there's any other questions, just ask and hopefully I didn't suck too much on 